everyone, my name's Ali, and welcome or welcome back to my channel, Mindful Living. I'm finally back with a brand new video today and I figured it was the perfect time to share with you guys a few tips and tricks on how to start your own seeds. I love growing my own food from seed, I think there are many benefits and it is so rewarding as well. So throughout this video, I'll be sharing my top 5 tips on how to start your seeds indoors. Let's go ahead and get started. My first tip is to make sure you are starting your seeds at the right time. Most of the time you're going to start your seeds anywhere from 6 to 8 weeks before the last frost date for your area. You can go online and check this to be certain of when that is, but also be mindful of things like the temperature outside and how cold it's getting overnight. You need to pay attention to how long seeds are going to take to germinate and begin by planting the ones that will take the longest first. A lot of this information is provided for you on the back of your seed packets, so make sure you are reading that through thoroughly. That's one mistake I made my first year of gardening is not paying attention to the details on the back. So it's really important to look at how long they take to germinate along with how long the plant is going to take to get to full size. This will usually be listed as days to maturity, so this is also equally important because you want to make sure that you are transitioning your seedlings outdoors at the correct time. Of course this will be different for each plant but a general rule of thumb is to plant the cool season crops first for the springtime and then move into your more heat tolerant plants for the summer. A few examples of seeds that I start first for my garden are things like lettuces, sugar snap peas, and leafy greens like kale, spinach, or arugula. Tip number two is to use a seed starting mix to start all of your seeds. Some of my favorite choices for this is Jiffy's Premium Seed Starting Mix. This is my personal preference, but they were out of it at my garden center this year, so I did go ahead and buy the miracle Grow Seed Starting Mix. And so far so good, all of my seedlings have been growing really well. I love using these Jiffy pods to grow in, that's also my personal preference to plant all of my seeds in. They're really easy to transfer into the garden and you can plant these directly into the soil. The reason I recommend seed starting mix is because it's really lightweight and it's both fast draining but also holds onto moisture along with promoting strong root growth for your plants. You'll want to avoid garden soil in particular as it's simply too heavy for your seedlings. Moving on to tip number three, which is to sow your seeds at the right depth. All of this information is provided to you on the back of your seed packet, so like I mentioned earlier, really important that you read that through. It'll tell you exactly how deep to sow your seeds. Depths can range anywhere from half an inch to a quarter inch, but this will depend on the type of seed you are growing as well. For germination, you want to keep the soil moist, so never let it dry out. You might want to check on it a couple times a day. I like to use a spray bottle and mist my seedlings just to make sure the soil remains moist. Of course, don't forget to label your seeds. If you're growing a lot like me, it can get really confusing when you have multiple seedlings on the go. Most seeds will germinate at 65 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the soil temperature that they need to germinate. You can use a heat mat if needed, but I have never done that myself for my seedlings. It's important that you don't plant your seeds too deep in the soil. My first year starting from seeds, I made this mistake and they ended up rotting in the damp soil instead of germinating. So follow those package directions and you shouldn't have any problems. Tip number four is once your seeds have germinated, you need to provide them with enough light. A lot of people start seeds indoors and place them in front of a sunny windowsill. And while this will somewhat work, you'll definitely have your seeds germinate and you'll have growth. But for the best results, you'll need to use a grow light. Seedlings need anywhere from 12 to 16 hours of sunlight per day. So you'll see why a windowsill just won't be enough sunlight. You'll start to experience stunted growth, smaller seedlings, and leggy seedlings, which is when they stretch out of their container and they grow up taller. To avoid this, simply purchase a grow light. You can find cheap ones on Amazon. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. I use my Aero Garden, so if you have an Aero Garden, you can definitely use that as well. 
you'll want to keep your grow light really close to the plant so they should be kept about four to six inches away from your plant as it's growing. In case you didn't know, plants absorb and use energy through red and blue light. Your best bet is to use an LED light as they are the most energy efficient and this type of light has a long lifespan. It doesn't produce any heat so it's really safe to use with your plants. And LED lights also have a wide spectrum of light that includes red and blue light which is what your plant need for optimal growth. My fifth and final tip, which is probably one of the most important ones on the list, and that is to make sure that you harden off all of your seedlings before you transition them outdoors. Hardening off is described as the process of slowly introducing your new seedlings to the outdoor environment. This usually happens over a period of seven to 10 days, and each day you're going to slowly increase the amount of time they spend outside. So on the first day, you might leave your plants outside for about 30 minutes minutes. On day number two, you might leave them out for about an hour and gradually increase the amount of time until they are finally able to live outdoors. From there, you would be transitioning them into a container or into the ground. And the reason this step is so important is because your plants have been growing indoors in a controlled environment. They're not accustomed to the sun, the wind, the outdoor temperature. Allowing your plants to get used to the outdoor environment means that they're going to thrive and produce for you all season long. Well, that's it for this video today. I hope if you guys enjoyed my top five tips for starting your seeds indoors, that you'll leave me a like, leave me a comment down below, and don't forget to hit subscribe. Doing so allows my videos to reach even more viewers like you. So thank you so much, you guys, for all your continued support on my channel. I'll see you in my next one.